Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of An Author's Kiss, right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Keith Leon. We are going to be talking about his new book, Walking With My Angels. Mm, it's his first book, and well, actually, his first book seemingly failed. Uh, he used his second book to build a massive platform and skyrocket his business, and he ended up with three mentors who always wished for. Since then, he's been sharing how he did it with um, up-and-coming speakers and authors with inspiring missions and messages that need to be shared. Keith's passion is for teaching people how to go from first thought to bestseller and how to manifest the life of their dreams. He is a multiple international best-selling author, co-owner of a successful book publishing company, and as an international speaker who has spoken at events including Jack Canfield, Bob Proctor, Neil Donald Walsh, Barbara DeAngles, uh, John Gray, Joe Vitale, and Marion Wilson. And he's appeared on many TV shows, including the Jenny McCarthy show and uh, Huffington Post and everything else. His recent book, um, we have a live tour in the US. His book is called Walking With My Angels, a true story. Uh, Keith has two passions in life. One is to connect you to the inner guidance system, which he calls angels. And the second is to help you get your, your mission and your message out to the world with your own very own book. And uh, Keith calls it the world's greatest business card. And here we have this business card of a wonderful book. So this one is something a little more personal, something a little bit more uh, at home, should we say? Welcome to the show, Keith. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So publishing yes, is walking, not easy. Walking. Writing a book is not easy, right? And as you said, your first one failed, right? But you try, try, try it again. But what is it about yeah. authoring that you love so much? Wow. Uh, well, two different types of writing books myself, I love because I get to share my my heart, my soul. I get to share my story uh, with others. And uh, sometimes that makes a difference in people's lives. Oh, yeah. So I love that. And then and the, the other part I love is helping other people to write their books. So mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I why I love pub, the publishing piece is because helping out other people to get their mission and their message out to the world is something I'm extremely passionate about. And um, I kind of uh, first book I wrote with with my wife was a relationship book, right? Seven Steps to Successful Relationships. The second book I did was actually uh, one of the first compilation books, bringing authors together. Yeah. And I had uh, 10 people from the movie The Secret in mm. that book. Mm. And, oh, and everybody else were people that you would would have heard of right, right? yes <laughs> all incredibly famous people and they all took me under their wing and taught me everything that they knew so i came out on the other end of that project uh, really an expert because mm. i just applied everything that they told me international bestseller speaking in front of a thousand people instead of 20 like yeah. <laughs> knew how to get media like everything right. changed. <laughs> well i mean that's the thing um mentorship is very important isn't it i always say inspiration begets invitation and when you're inspired by someone else it invites you to take the journey to believe in the possibility and that is what a mentor's job is isn't it to inspire not tell you how to do it but inspire you on on how to do it um you know with maybe some of their skills and their tools but just being able to open you up to see what can be done to believe in yourself, to believe that it's possible. Because if you don't believe it, you're not going to make it happen. Yeah, that's true. And, and because of these mentors and everything that they taught me, it completely changed everything in my life in the face of my business. Because of that, one way that I'm different than every other publisher is any book that we publish, I give my authors complimentary mentoring 
for free, <laughs> you know, mm. so they can they can come to me and I'll be sharing all the things that I've learned with them. So I, I love mentorship and I mm. love uh, when I meet young people along the way who are, you know, just uh, fired up and want to be entrepreneurs mm. or they want to write a book. And I love to take them under my wing as well and, and mentor them. Mm. I mean, we, we kind of talked a little bit about calling card in many, many ways for entrepreneurs, a book is actually the calling card it's that invitation that's being given out to people yeah. of this is who i am this is you know this is my vulnerability this is my passion and my commitment and and if people relate to that then they want to do business with that person yes it's a great it's a world's greatest business card is what i call it if you know how to use it correctly yes so yes. You know, you're using that book as a launch pad you're using it for credibility and if you literally use it as your business card right mm -hmm. and so when when there's somebody in front of you who's a potential client and you're feeling like they're a match you don't want to give them that teeny tiny little piece of paper yeah. you never hear anybody when you give them that you know you don't hear from anybody so if you give them your book and then you give it with an offer and you tell them what that is worth mm -hmm. then let's say that's the first coaching session with me and it's $250 value so I just right. now gave you $20, $20 book $250 call right $270 I must be successful if I can do that right right so and uh and you show up as a doer not a talker because you have a book so yes it's yes just, uh, exactly if you yeah if you frame that and you have your contact information in the book then they either go home read the book love you and call to get you the free thing or they throw it on the book the book on the table and every time they pass the book it says call him and get that free thing call him right. and get that free thing and it oh somebody kind of else picks it up and do. goes hey mate this is just the book i've been looking <laughs> for this? right you know, so, yeah. yeah it's the gift that keeps on giving exactly that's yeah, that's exactly my line that i say about authors and you know i'm giving in at this time of year i think books are a wonderful gift to give you know at the christmas period because yeah. it is a book that keeps on giving not only is it giving you either entertainment or information um but it's something that you're then going to apply to your own business and therefore it's going to keep on giving that way but it's also passing yeah. the book on and other people reading it and them having the same effect so there's a wonderful domino yeah. effect about you know um authorship yeah nobody ever throws away a book it's beautiful no no <laughs> if you i live in a very tiny place but if you see it it is consumed by books and i've got more in storage uh, so, <laughs> yeah i and, used to have a, i used to have a, jo a joke i'd say nobody ever throws away a, a book and if it's a good enough book they'll run inside if there's a fire to grab it <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah you know it's a good book when they save it from a yes. fire <laughs> yes exactly um but it's also you know reference um, you know, I find if, if you have a good book, you get into a conversation, you get into a situation and there is a reference that comes up from the book or I was reading this book or um, in the book or, you know, and something that kind of is being brought up in the conversation that's been addressed in the book. And it's a wonderful connector and also a, a door opener to solutions. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And it, pos it positions you as the expert in whatever it is that you wrote about. Right. Well, no, I mean, like, you know, every... yeah. mm -hmm. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a little bit of a delay. And, <laughs> and uh, especially with books, if you get endorsements uh -huh. from people well known in your field or just well known, uh, it's not what other people say. Or it's not what we say about ourselves, it's what other people say. Right? Yes. So there's that credibility by endorsement as well. So there's just so many levels to it and can really help you skyrocket your business by having your very own book endorsed by yes. uh, some well-known people. Um, you know, the other thing too, I think about, you know, everybody wants to be an author nowadays. In fact, actually, I've got I've made a promise that I'm going to have my book done by March and I haven't started it yet. Oh. So, <laughs> because I sort of, you know, running a podcast business, I haven't had time. So <laughs> I've got to make the time. But, um, you know, a lot of people, it comes easy to them, you know, just, you know, they can f flow it out. It's just, it's just very, very easy. I, I would actually, for me, be do the audio book and then transcribe it because I'm better with that. But there are an awful lot of people also who think they're authors. And, you know, when it comes down to it, 
they may have some good ideas, but the uh, compilation of it hasn't reflected out. And so, you know, then they self publish, which is fine if you know what you're doing, but then they're disappointed of the reaction. And that is just because you really do need the steps, the overseer, the editor, the, you know, I mean, how many books have been sent where I, I just look at the cover and I go, it's not inviting. You know, and it's not yeah. reflecting the story. And it's we do kind of consume with our, our, our eyes first, don't we? You know, does that cover capture me? Does the title capture me? So there is a benefit to having yeah. a publisher that can guide you through these things so that you really your book really does make the statement it's want to making want to make. Yeah. Yeah. It's when you self publish it's you don't know what you don't know. And the first mm. thing is that people do judge a book by its cover. Oh, yes. <laughs> Contrary to belief, they do. <laughs> yes. And, and also the and also the layout. You know, sometimes mm. you'll open up a self-published book and you're just like, I don't know what's wrong, but something's wrong. Right. And that's because there there are choices that we as publishers Whoop. have been wobbling make and have mm. been making for book. There's choices that we make uh, as publishers that you wouldn't know who to make right and so if you don't make those choices it's like we've been seeing the same exact things in all of our books for so many years from mm -hmm. from professional publishers and if it's not there we're just like something's off and i don't yes. know what it is <laughs> yeah yeah so that's uh that's why i always say it's it's much better to have a have a publisher than to uh, self-publish because if especially if you're going to use it to grow your business mm -hmm. or your platform you want something that that you can be proud of when you when you hand to people and and what you said about uh authors versus i would say speakers mm -hmm. or authors versus entrepreneurs like authors are writers and yes. they like you said they can just write and yeah that's not mo most people right yeah. <laughs> most people you want a book to grow your business you want mm -hmm. it to use it as a platform get on tv get on radio do all those things that's why we created the you speak it book program mm -hmm. it's like seven phone calls you just come and and we guide you through speaking the book and right. then we turn it into a book for you right mm -hmm. uh i remember we, we we created that process my wife and i and it was a couple years down the line we had done that book for so many people and i was like hey i haven't got to do that myself <laughs> yet <laughs> so exactly. so i did a, i did a book using our you speak it process and and it was it was amazing because it was everything you know that i had been sharing that it was which is grace and ease right mm -hmm. and then i got to experience that myself and put out a book in record time and and have it be something i was proud of and just to have it go through the whole team and the whole process and mm -hmm. come out on the other end it was it's pretty pretty enjoyable process i have to say well you know you big word there process and i think have patience with yourself you know um mm -hmm. there is that structure thing where you can kind of label the chapters that you know you know the content you want to put in there but you know that not everybody can sit down and creativity happens and i you know maybe one chapter is speaking to you first and you want to write that before you do another and especially if it is kind of your calling card it's not a novel that needs the sequence um yeah. and it's you know if, if that's where you know the the story needs to start for you that is fine you know um but uh, you do need to dedicate, and this is the reason why I haven't got my book out yet, is dedicating the time, switching off to everything else and saying, I, my discipline is I am going to give the book this amount of time uh, and get on with it because um, procrastination, the other P, which is a bigger letter <laughs> on top of my head right now, um, you know, is it, it's very easy to say, I will get to it. But, you know, just like you have to in any form of your business, if you're looking at it as a as a book for your business. Well, if you need to invest in your business, new equipment or new this or new system, your book is part of that system. So the same right. amount of time you would do for that, you need to do for this, don't you? Yeah. I, I like to say you have to make yourself and your book just as important as everybody else. That means family, that means clients, that mm. means everyone. So that means when you put the time in the book, you keep that commitment the same as you would a paying client. No matter right. what, that's the time. There's no scratching it out for a paying client. Right. <laughs> no, so you have to keep that appointment. And that's one of the ways that you'll get through it. And I love what you said about the order because I always uh, start with what I call a roadmap right, mm. where you do write out everything mm. that the book is going to be from front to back. 
And then in most cases, unless it's like you said, a novel, uh, you you don't want to start at the top right. and write all the, all the way through. You want to start with the chapter that feels the easiest. You've written a million times yeah. in your head. You can yes. do it in your sleep. Like start with the easy one and write that. And then what's, and then I say, look at the list and say, who's next? And whichever yeah. one pops out and goes, me, 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 <laughs> yes. write that chapter. Yes. And, and you keep uh, kind of the only rule to, to have success though is complete a chapter before you go on to the next. Right. Like our, our, our subconscious mind does not like any undones. Right. So if anything is undone, it, it doesn't want to move on. So then mm -hmm. if you try to move on, now you're starting to fight with your, your sub, uh, subconscious mind. And then, uh, and another tip I love to share with people is there's a thing that people call writer's block. Mm -hmm. and, and all that is, is a pissed off inner child. <laughs> Yes, and there's, there's many of those around. Of us, right? There's part of us that always uh, wants to play and it yeah. never wants to be serious. Right. And and trust me, it doesn't think that writing is play time. <laughs> so if you uh, if you take a timer of some sort and you set it for 50 minutes, five zero minutes, and you tell your little little one, hey, in 50 minutes, we're going to play. Mm -hmm. And when the alarm goes off, you jump up, you go stretch, you spin around in a circle, you put on music, you go hug a tree, you go whatever your <laughs> inner child would want to do. You do that for 10 minutes and then you come back to write and you say, hey, now it's time to do what I consider fun, which is write this book for mm -hmm. another 50 minutes. But don't you worry, I'll be back and right. we'll play again. And, and uh, it's funny because I, people think I'm kind of cuckoo with that, but everybody who's done it mm -hmm. has been able to marathon write for weeks on end and never experienced that thing people call writer's block, not even right. once. It just works. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, you know, the, the getting up and the stretching is not only good for your body, um, but it's good yeah. to clear your mind and, you know, kind yeah. of put you back on track. It's, a, it's that, that deep breath thing. Take a breath, you know, uh, recenter yourself because you can start getting gobbledygook you know, going down a rabbit hole with something and sometimes just taking that break, you know, shaking out the sillies, popping to the bathroom, yes. you know, doing whatever you need to do. And you come back yeah, and you read that last paragraph. Away. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you come back and you read that last paragraph, a page, you go, oh, gosh, I was going off track there. And you can't see that if you're in it. <clears throat> but when you revisit something, you can see, OK, that's not really what I wanted to say. Right. So, uh, you know, that yeah. good reflection of what you're doing is uh, important along the way as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I would only suggest going back one paragraph, like you said. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, you're going <laughs> to go back and like, be critical. Right. <laughs> yes. Don't don't rewrite while you write, like write the yeah. whole thing free form all the way through the first time and then take one pass through. And I always say as you're reading the one pass you say is that was that for them or was that for me right because there'll be some things that you wrote just so that you could relive the process for you but you didn't really want to share it but at least you got it out you got it on the page right mm -hmm. and uh because everything is energy even if you remove words from the manuscript the feeling is still there yes so i've had i've had people come in and say oh i love when you talked about this in your book and it was about something that i had removed the words so they still got the essence, essence of, it, of it. everything mm -hmm. is energy but they didn't have the exact words because i ended up not wanting to share that <laughs> right? so uh, one time passed through you know not yeah. over critical and then hand it off to an editor because really what most people do themselves and they do it forever and they never get a book right yes. because of it yes is is what the editor's supposed to do yes yeah you, be, you oh, turn into I, a perfectionist and you can talk yourself out yeah. of anything right yeah absolutely yeah. the brain the brain will jump in and, and mess your book up because the because everything is energy we you want to keep it as close to that original manuscript as possible and then if the editor comes in and they're like mm, when you said that i wasn't clear what you're can you put, put more words on that and then they add the words that you say then into the manuscript right then, then that's great but uh, as soon as you get into uh, there's two different energies being which is your first pass mm -hmm. and then there's doing mm -hmm. being if a book is a being book 
I, I can't put it down. I can't stop reading it. I'll stay up all night with the flashlight trying to keep my <laughs> wife up, right? And I, if I have to go to an appointment, I'm like, I'll bring it with me. Mm -hmm. That's a being book where people kept their heart, their soul, their words. Mm -hmm. They didn't perfectionize it to death. Then there's a perfect book of words, but that's a doing book. That's mm -hmm. a, I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to make it perfect. I'm trying to perfection it and uh, those books you can you can put down and you'll forget for a couple weeks that you're reading yes. it oh oh yeah I was reading that book and you know which which book do you want to put out Being you know I think that's a very you. important uh, thing <laughs> is is know your why before you do it and yeah. you know I've, I've done numerous business shows and uh, numerous other shows but you know in the business shows is that people are tired of the you know remember the flash that we used to get on the sites, you know, flash, flash, flash in your face. We're tired of anything in our face. You know, it, we yeah. want to be inspired. That's the invitation. Right. And we also yeah. want that authenticity. We want that vulnerability. And so we don't want the, the doing book. Now you should do this and I'll do this for you because it's a sales pitch, right? right. There, there's no connection in there. When it comes from, I failed and I succeeded doing this and these were my challenges and this was my blockage, but this is what I turned around and did, you know, then it is more relatable. You're talking to people who are going through the same thing or, or you know, who understand what you're going through and they want to know, how did you do it? And if you did it for yourself, can you do it for me? So we want that connection. We want your vulnerability. You know, we don't want all your dirty linen, but we want your your vulnerability because that is where the connection is. And that's what makes us feel I can trust you because the best teachers yeah. are those that have gone through that process before you. Yeah. Yeah. The more vulnerable, the better, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's just so many more people now that are uh, empaths of an empathic nature than there mm -hmm. ever was. And, uh, and th I think that's why, why it flipped. Yes. You know, so many more empaths were born and we grew up and, and at one point where there were just more of us than the old school yeah. people that were used to the flash, flashy yes. sales guy on stage. Yo, babe, yeah. I got you. Right. <laughs> and all of a sudden the people who got up and just like oh, bared their heart were yeah. like, that's my teacher. Yes. That's my teacher. Right. They're talking and to my so, soul, so my heart. Yeah. 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 And so that the, the book that you talked about walking with my angels, right. Mm -hmm. That a true story that's the most vulnerable piece of work i've done like mm -hmm. people people that read that if i hand them the book myself like i just feel like inspired to give it to them when we first meet i'll be like after you read this book if you still want to talk to me then i know we're friends right, right. <laughs> i yes. know that we're i know that we're kindred because there's nothing that i didn't that i didn't share in that book so it's like the most vulnerable piece of work and and i did what i was sharing with you like freeform wrote it and then read it through once and then handed it off to the editors and you know it takes a while before a book comes out so i'm on my book tour and uh i was <laughs> interviewed on this tv show and they're like oh i loved when you talked about and they t talked about something that i was like that was in the book <laughs> <laughs> like it was the most vulnerable ever 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 thing and i couldn't believe i even kept it and they were like yes but but i'm so glad that it is because anybody who has that issue or that mm -hmm. challenge is going to be helped by it and i was like oh okay thanks for that feedback but i was like oh i gotta go back and read it again yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know this I... is the, the reason why i do my podcast is because somebody's vulnerability and like you know this last week, I had somebody who, who, you know, openly admitted that she was a um, recovering alcoholic. And it, it was all about the tips of, you know, surviving the festive season. And there's somebody out there that's in that same boat and they don't know what to do. Or, or, or you know, is the shame or blame or this or that everything go with it. And it's no, there isn't. And, and it's okay to tell people triggers. No, I need to go. Or, I don't want to. Um, whatever it is that helps you, you know, not just the sobriety, but that honors you as a person and your own well-beingness. And when we hear that from other people that have gone through it, it gives permission to other people to stand yeah. up and say, this is my challenge as well. And, you know, I'm going to use some of these tips and apply them or there is a kindred spirit there because one thing we're absolutely begging for as human beings is connection of, of being understood, of being heard, of being seen. And 
again, numerous business shows from all over the world and the beautiful thing that's changing. It's about investing in the people and the planet before profit, not the profit at the yeah. expense of people and planet because people don't want to go there anymore. Yeah. They've seen how it's yeah. raped and pillaged the world and they go, no, I want somebody that's more sensitive. I want somebody that can understand the way I'm feeling. And it doesn't matter what your business is or how higher up you are. As you say, there's an inner child in every CEO, every successful billionaire. <laughs> there is an inner child that still feels insecure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And haven't we wanted connection even more in the last year and a half? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Right. Well, come January, it's two years now. Oh, I remember like calling people and having them just cry and say, I would do anything for a hug right now. During yes. The shutdown. And I was just like, yeah. Oh, how blessed I am to have, be here with my wife. And mm. you know, we, yeah. we're hugging all the time, but I can't imagine just like having that not be a thing. That was mm. just, just mind blowing to me. And, uh, and so speaking of that, you know, coming in upon two years, um, that's, that's what ended my angel book tour. Mm hmm was the shutdown yeah so i was like whoa, whoa what's my life purpose project mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm doing what i'm here on the planet to do so if that comes to an end then what am i to do now right right so i, I went within and asked that question and sat with it and sometimes i have to sit for days and mm -hmm. this was one of those times right if i'm not doing that what am i here to do mm -hmm. and then uh that's where I finally downloaded the the book project that I've been working on uh, since, and I'm actually, volume three is coming out in January. It's called Navigating the Clickety Clack, How to Live a Peace-Filled Life in a Seemingly Toxic World. Ah, so needed right now. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just, I saw my friend Fletch, you know, when I had my eyes closed, mm. saying, relax, you're in the clickety clack. Because my, my wife and I were new entrepreneurs when we, when we met this guy, he became a spiritual mentor of ours. And we'd call him freaking out with our business stuff. Mm -hmm. He'd say, relax, you're in the clickety clack. Yeah. It's like, what are you talking about? What's the <laughs> clickety clack? And he was like, oh, well, you know, you didn't have a 10 speed bicycle when you were growing up. Yeah. You know, when you were, were like pedaling and you went to change from one gear to the next, but it didn't, the chain didn't catch yet. What yeah. sound did that make? And I was like, clickety clack, clickety. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, but you had faith and you kept pedaling because you, yes. you knew it was going to catch right yes. so you had faith kept moving forward and then when it did catch you were off into a whole new gear even better right. than before exactly yes. so relax you're yes. just in the clickety clack yeah so uh when that i was like oh what a yeah. perfect book for right now <laughs> right yes and uh, okay so, and this is how, this is how my process works, right? When I'm working with the angels, which you already shared, I love to teach people how to, how to get real time answers from mm. source, right? Mm. Cause we're not, we're not separate from source. No, we're, we're, we're not. We're made up of the stuff that is. Everything that that's universal people, particle right? is us, right? Yeah. There's an open so, channel. We've just yeah, got to learn yeah. how to tune into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I go, I, I got it. It's, it's navigating the clickety clack. So mm. what's the subtitle? And then I, close my eyes again i'm breathing and i'm seeing myself like giving workshops over the years and the number number one most attended workshop always was out of all of them was how to live a peace-filled life in a toxic world yes and i was like okay so how to live a peace-filled life in a toxic world and i heard right right over my shoulder like you're right here go seemingly and i was like <laughs> seemingly seemingly okay so i go how to live a peace-filled life in a seemingly toxic world Right. Oh, yes. what a beautiful distinction, especially yes. for right now. Exactly. Everybody's kind of on the different side of the fence and believing in a right. different thing. And there's so much information, but it's coming from all different sources and like seemingly toxic or love it. So yeah. that's what it's because it's what we feed that. is what's going to grow. And so yes. if we're going to feed the toxicity, it's going to continue to grow. So if we choose, yeah. if we choose to feed a different yeah. channel, the possibilities, the, the, the camaraderie, the compassion, the collaboration. If we choose to go down that avenue, then we're actually yeah. going to leave the toxicity behind and we're going to find the fluidity yeah. because we as human yeah. beings and everything in this world is fluid. And I think yeah. where we get the angst and the anger and the toxicity is when we're stagnant, when we're lost yeah. in the pain of the moment and we can't see our way through. And so when we yeah. open up to the possibilities and choose 
to feed a different source, then the source will guide us through into a total different abundance. Yeah, and it helps to have those tips and tools to be able to yes. navigate through those times, yes. right? Yes. So that's really what the book is, is me like picking the brains of all the pe people that I know that are living that principle. They yes. They are the ones who stay peaceful. They have the tools to stay peaceful. So yeah. so because of that, uh, because of the, the book I told you that changed my life, mm -hmm. you know, where all, all those people, because of those connections, well, the first book we had Jack Canfield and Bob Proctor and Christy Whitman and then some other transformational leaders that I knew. And then the second one, we had Marie Diamond and Joe Batali right? and, uh, and uh, Adam Markell. And then uh, this book, we have uh, Reverend Michael Beckwith and John Martini, and me are the, the experts in that one. And then and then a whole bunch of additional transformational experts. So it's, uh, whew, it's just been incredible. Mm -hmm. to for me because I, I did all the interviews personally because mm -hmm. I wanted to re receive that right yes <laughs> so I'm I'm hearing all the tools I'm hearing the stories yeah. and it's just been a beautiful way to get through this time you mm -hmm. know through this process with the powerful project receiving all of those uh, tips and tools and hearing them myself and, and applying as some of the ones I didn't already have in my toolbox right exactly <laughs> and the thing is about those angels those divine energies, they've already gone through the process, they've stepped into their meaningful purpose, and their calling is to be that illuminational light of wisdom yeah. for others that yes. are following. And yeah. every single one of us can be them. It's all a question of are we willing to take that path, uh, yes. the path of enlightenment, the part of that illumination, that part of surrender, of allowing. Um, I'm a knowingness coach and the knowingness for me is that gut feeling you get. I don't know why I know, but I know. And that is yeah. that, that source, that energy, that divine knowledge that comes through to you. It resonates yeah. with the heart in truth. It goes to the spirit into action and your mind will know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. And yes, that yes. is feeling the wisdom to understand the knowledge and the knowledge impact at that time. We have become so much about knowledge base and we've forgotten how to use that knowledge wisely for it to be productive and serviceable for other people. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's funny that that voice, uh, you know, is called so many things. Yeah. Intuition, you know, first instinct. Yes. Angels. Yes. Like everybody calls it a different thing, but but it, if so you listen thing? to it, <laughs> it's because it's right, but only every time. Right. right. <laughs> if you listen to the first instinct, like yes. I love to teach people, get a first instinct journal, write a question down, ask it, and the first answer that comes, write it down. And if you be willing to stick to whatever that first yes. answer that came was. You're just that one tool your whole life will completely transform. Mm. It's it's the second instinct, the third, the fourth. You go back and forth and tug yeah. more so many times you can't remember what the first instinct yeah, exactly. was. That's where you get in trouble. Yeah. That's where you get well, in trouble. Well, because that's when the head has got in and started yeah. analyzing. All right. You know, yeah. and I've always say, feel your knowledge, feel your wisdom, feel yeah. because your heart yeah. only knows truth. Your spirit only knows truth right um mm -hmm. the soul only knows truth it is the intellect that will argue with everything right so <laughs> yeah. if you go with that first instinct that divine knowledge it is your knowingness it is comes from the very core you know it to be true you don't need to mm -hmm. understand or validate or validate or justify it is and if you follow yeah. that thread it will take you down the avenue you're meant to go on yes yes and trust, trust yes. it. <laughs> yes. Trust and and that's really what what faith is. Yes. Faith yes. Is tr trusting that the divine has a higher plan. Trusting in that first instinct. Trust, right? It just all it all comes back to a form of trust. Trusting your inner knowing, your inner guide. Mm -hmm. your... Well, then, you know that goes back to the why you want to write a book. You know, is it you want to bring in more clients? Uh, well, we all need that if we have a business. Clients is obviously the, you know, the fuel for the business. Yeah. But is what kind of clients do you want to have? And, you know, your instincts in your book, speaking to what you wanted 
in that situation you know what somebody yeah. gave you in that situation and what you're now offering other people because of that journey because of that process you know becomes i think so much more authentic and and uh, vulnerable and truthful uh, because it's mm -hmm. less about the pitch and the sale it's more about the connection and every single business transaction we do is relationship based and if you feel you can trust that person in that relationship <clears throat> then you're going to be willing to do business with them yeah yeah my wife uh, likes to say every relationship that you have is a relationship with yourself it is so if you're yeah. if you're if that's in the forefront right yeah <laughs> then and you're always treating people the way you would want to be treated then everything's going to go fine it's <laughs> going to have a nice flow or, to it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, you know, a lot of people think, you know, I mean, I live with an 88 year old and her story, her life story is extraordinary. And I'm very often mentioning it on shows because she is such an inspiration. The things that she's gone through, you know, um, and how she survived them and how she has an exuberance for life and the way she sees life, the way she's chosen to see it, despite the hand that she was given um, mm. is an inspiration. And, you know, people, oh, who wants to hear my story? Well, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised of who is going to relate to your story, whether you're writing it for business or writing it just because it's a story that needs to be told. That story right. is going to get picked up from someone who feels you're telling their story or they can really right. relate or something that has given them a shift in perspective, um, you know, to go down a different avenue. It's why do we want to write the book? If you're wanting to be rich and famous in a JK Rowling, forget it, <laughs> right? But if you're Good wanting luck. to, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you're wanting to have an impact, or, you know, I'll, I'll just be a solution or an inspiration for someone out there. You know, it's rather like these podcasts. Once they're out there, what people do with them and how it affects them is out of my control. Right? What you get from each show that we do, what knowledge we impart, what you do with it is up to you. I've got no say in it whatsoever. It's the same with a book. Once you've birthed it and you let it go, how those people pick it up, use it, and in what way is up to them. Yeah, and it's out of, it's out of your hands. Like, mm. as, soon as, you, as soon as you say yes to writing the book, I say it's a God thing. You know, that's yeah. a God spirit universe is now yes. working it out that that whoever's supposed to read that book is going through and experiencing exactly what they need to so that when it comes out it lands in their hand at the most perfect time and when that first person is standing in front of you a lot of times tears coming down their face saying thank you for writing this book yes. here's how it changed my life exactly. like the first time that happens you don't care if you sold one book or a million copies yes. it's worth everything that you had to face every speed bump every hiccup you know every roadblock because uh some of the most successful authors that we have uh in our catalog were ones that when we first met they said you know if i change one life with this book it'll be worth it those yeah. are the people that are successful the people who uh, come to me and say you know i want to make a million dollars i have to <laughs> reel them back and get them back into reality yes uh, <laughs> you know the that the odds of that happening is like the same as winning the lottery, right? Yeah. Uh, and it is the amount that you want to make, you have to invest 30% of that yourself to make it happen. So do you have $300,000 $300, to put right. into marketing? Right, exactly. We can make you a million dollars. Yes. You know? However, if you're using that book as a platform to something, right, to get on stage, to get coaching clients, to get, you know, to build your business, then it's really only going to take you a few clients to to recoup your investment right. from the book, you know, so just consider it a marketing expense and and really not a very expensive marketing expense. <laughs> and when when you it's look really... at it on the broader spectrum, because it is, you know, it it will continue to have a life. You know, it's it's not like an expensive dinner you're taking people out and trying to impress. It's a book that you know is on the shelf and will be picked up when it's needed or handed to people when it's needed and it, it, it keeps on giving that's the beautiful thing right. about books and you know I, yeah. I draw the same analogy here with i've been doing this nine and a half years and i've got shows that may be out of date as far as their program but the information that they share 
is relevant information to somebody going through that same situation at that time. So yeah. good information, good wisdom never dies. It's there for somebody right. when they're ready for it, whenever. Yes, <laughs> so true. It is so true. So you've written this book for you. This is your book. This was your vulnerability and, and it's something that you were compelled to do. And I understand the, uh, that was in the book because I, I do my podcast that way too. I press record and out it comes. Right. And it's yeah. like, uh, um, even the way I, I write my blogs or my articles and I can go back and read it a few years later and go, Oh, that's interesting. Who wrote it? Me. <laughs> like it. Well, walking with my angels was done in a very interesting way. Cause I, I was told that I would write it in my early twenties mm -hmm. and then I waited for 20 plus years to be told it was time to write it. All right. So once I finally got it's time and I was like the book, yes, it's okay. time finally. Right. Then I was like, I'm going to do this thing. And, but I looked at my calendar and I was booked with clients. Mm -hmm. and so I was like, I finally get to go and I'm booked with clients. And my wife says, give me the calendar book. So she flipped ahead like six weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, open so she said how many days do you think you would need and i was like she said uh okay well you have like eight days that are not booked six weeks from now and so uh so she just x'd them mm -hmm. right and so i basically i wrote it was three books i wrote three books in eight days so wow just just to tell you what, what can be done yes. if you're willing and you're doing the process i taught you earlier right, mm -hmm. with the inner child and all yes. of that and i pretty much wrote around the clock for mm -hmm. for those eight days but i wrote three books and then they uh because i thought it would be three smaller books and mm -hmm. come out that way and uh but when the editors edited the first when they got to the end of the first book, they were like, if you left me hanging right here, I would be so upset with you <laughs> if I had to wait. And so, uh, so, th so I just said, we'll treat it like a movie and trim everything that doesn't really need to be there. So they did that. And then it ended up being like one really good size book mm -hmm. uh, instead of three smaller ones. And so, uh, so I was just, I did every form you could. So I would write on the computer until I cramped up. You're right. And then I would turn turn on Dragon Naturally Speaking and speak yes. articulately as I could and have it typing the words while I was doing that. And then when my voice got kind of tired or I just needed a break, then I would jump in the car, go eight minutes down to the river, sit by the water, and whisper into my phone text, and then send those to the the email right yeah. and then when and i'd go back open up my email and then transfer yeah. that back into the manuscript and then start typing again mm -hmm. so it was like all forms of writing that you can do were done <laughs> in mm. that book so that i could keep going because you know once you cramp up you've got to yeah give yeah it a rest exactly for a while and, and the, the thing is just know your time so you're right and it, it, there's always certain times you know where the inspiration i mean for me the moment to put my head on my pillow if i could just have a chip in my head my book would have been written yeah. a long time ago right and but right, what i've right. learned to do is is grab the phone and if there's a particular statement you know put the statement out on recording so that i don't lose that statement because from that yeah. statement i know what's going to come from it but it's that statement that those lines or that you know, that lead in that you need. And so wherever you yeah. are, when something jumps into your head, get it down somewhere, right? Because you know right. that that's going to be something that's going to catalyze into something else. Yeah. And another thing I did was uh, it said, don't call me, don't write right. me, you know, like I'm I just turned the Not on this planet just, right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, just got, if, unless the house is burning down, honey, I'm, yes. I'm out. So, uh, so yeah, it was, it was an amazing, amazing process. And, you were uh, completely in flow. And, yeah. you know, maybe not everybody can do that, but they can certainly, you know, my brother is an author, has been for 50 odd years. Um, he's... Um, I mean, I love his books. He always takes me on in incredible journeys, um, but he's a disciplined writer. Go for a walk, have his breakfast, write for so many hours, have his lunch, walk, come back, yeah. da, 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 da. And he can do that. You know, he, you know, like where I've become the disciplined podcaster, he's the writer um, and he can do that. And it's like, 
like people picking up a book and reading a chapter before going to bed. No, if I get into a book, you know, I'm binging. Right. I want to read it to the end. I find it very hard to put down. And so uh, I know when it does come to me to read my book, it, it's, it will be audio and it most likely will be me at least doing one chapter at a time, getting into flow with that. And it's like, no what suits you, right? You, you've got the techniques yeah. that you're sharing, um, but know what suits you and and kind of honor that. You know, this is where I'm good at, this time period I'm good at, this situation I'm good at, and make sure that, you know, that's what you honor about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how anybody can write, you know, 15 minutes a day. <laughs> There's right. people that do that. It yeah. takes me 15 minutes to get going, mm -hmm. like really going, and then I'm in the flow. There's no way I want to stop at 15 minutes. So right. I'm not, I'm not that guy. I'm a marathon writer. So yes. I just have to block out, block out the time and yeah. just don't even think about sleeping for that amount of time. <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'm uh, a uh, article writer. So my come will come in into that you know, type of thing. Um, so I know yeah. that perhaps, you know, for me, the one chapter at a time will be it. Yeah. And and I know yeah. that, you know, as I said, um, if you kind of write out what your chapter titles are, because you know where you want to go, right? You know yeah. that you want to cover this and, and you can feel that chapter coming on, right? And that's where you want to yeah. go because that's where the inspiration is. And it will then shed light on another chapter that you were going to do in this way but now because right. of that chapter you're going to take it off in another direction right right and, and the way that we're and the way that we're suggesting you know is contrary to the way a lot of people suggest mm -hmm. but imagine if you went from chapter one and chapter two was what i call a heavy yeah there was some stuff in chapter two that you're going to have to relive some drama and you were and and you were just like no no i, I don't want to do right. that and you push the computer away and you stop yeah like so many people get stopped dead in their tracks mm -hmm. because of that just trying to write in a linear chapter one chapter two chapter yes three. and uh and and here's another trap <laughs> if you write your introduction first and then write uh people get in forever writing mode because of that, because yeah. they'll write the whole book, they'll come back, read the introduction, they'll be like, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. And it's because, yeah. it's because you should write all the chapters, the conclusion and the introduction, you write last. Yes. Remember we were talking about knowing you don't know what you don't know You're right. when you self-publish your book? Well, one of the things that's included in a good introduction is the journey of writing mm -hmm. is talked about. So it's, here's why I'm writing the book. Here's what it's about. Here's why I'm writing it. Here's what happened. Here was the journey of writing the book. And then here's what I hope that you'll receive right. from reading the book. Those are the four parts of a great introduction. If you don't have the one piece, again, you read it, your mind goes, something's missing. I don't know what it is. You start to rewrite. So you started the introduction, you rewrote that, you start, and then, oh, might as well rewrite the first chapter and the right. second chapter. And you end, <laughs> you end off, end up in like, my book's never going to be finished land. Right. Yes. <laughs> so many yeah. forever writing. Yeah. And, well, and it's I, taken me 10 years to write the book. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I've spoken at a lot of events over the years. And I remember, I remember when one was like, I'm writing a book and I said would you like some support with that and she goes no I'm good and I said okay great nice to meet you and I remembered her face yeah. then the next event I went to uh, I saw her again and then I said hey how's it going with that book and she said still writing and months went by and I'm at another event I'm like hey I recognize you hey how's that book going still writing right it was yeah. a couple of years later I ran into her how's that book still writing and that's like that's what happened when if we be so we don't know what we don't know. Right. We don't get support. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Tell us about this um, other program we have, uh, the, the Speak. Oh, you speak it? Book yes, program? you speak it. Yeah, that's for people. You, you have a mission, you have a message that really needs to get out there, but you don't have any time. Mm, right. right. Like, there's so many functional medical practitioners, acupuncturists, yes. you know, yes. speakers. You know, there's so many businesses that that applies to is like you're being in service to others so you have no time to write that it's for you right mm -hmm. and so uh, so we created a process where you show up to seven phone calls and in those seven phone calls we get you to speak your book and we get 
all of the information that we need to take that and turn it into a book for you mm -hmm. and a book that you'll be proud to have your name on uh, or teach you how to get endorsements from well-known people all mm -hmm. the things i've been sharing right? right those are all the the bonuses that come with the program is how to get endorsements how to use it to get on stage how to how to how to instead of most companies are like okay you have a book good luck with that right yeah. i want you to have everything that you need to know to use that book as a launch pad and get clients and and to make money with it which is you know one of our goals right yeah, when we yeah. create a book and so uh, so it's all of that it's just everything from thinking about writing this book to books being delivered to your doorstep is included mm -hmm. so people to interview you you know do the roadmap yes. call at the beginning interview you for the chapters uh layout cover editing proofreading uh, everything put your book up for sale on amazon for you all included at, at one investment so so it's uh it's really been the answer for mm -hmm. so many people now for so many years since we uh really downloaded that mm -hmm. <laughs> from yeah right we downloaded like how can we be of service to the people that need it and make the writing process fast easy and affordable that was right. the question we went to the universe yeah. with and when we started downloading pieces and writing all of them down on a sheet of paper and because we were still using paper back then yes. <laughs> and, uh, and we looked at that piece of paper at one point and said oh with this works we just reinvented the wheel mm -hmm. <laughs> right? mm -hmm. it's wow it'd be like the easiest for anybody ever to write a book so that's what we've been doing for many many years now and, and it's just uh, our joy and pleasure to help people get their book in six six to nine months complete and out and that, is that Which only is kind of for the business people time. or what if somebody does have a novel or if they do have a a more you know comprehensive life story or something they want to get out do you work with people on that as well yeah we're a full service publishing company and we have many team members and many editors that have specific niches so mm -hmm. if somebody needs more traditional ghost writing we have it if they need a book coach credibility accountability or things mm -hmm. you were talking about to make sure it gets done or someone to send it to and bounce it off of to get ideas or any of that we, we have all of that uh, that you speak it program is is a it's a five chapter book it's a business building right. type book uh, if somebody does have we had one person who had a like a storytelling book it was an elderly gentleman mm -hmm. and he was able to do the program because it was like what are your five main stories you want to share mm -hmm. right? and so and then we broke those down and then he's he's kind of stuck to the plan so so it does create a a, a five chapter book if it's to be something more than that, say 10 chapters, then that's revealed on the first call, which is called the roadmap right. call. So right. we can still do the process. Uh, it's it's just like, that's more like, a, this is my life purpose book. Right. Or the book you've always wanted to do that you, it's gonna be big, right? So we can use the same process to get that done. It's a little, the investment's a little more uh, because for a business card book, like mm. five and a quarter by eight, 120 to 140 pages, that's the perfect size for right. a business building book. Because when you put it in somebody's hands, you don't watch the blood drain out of their <laughs> face. <laughs> they actually feel like they can read it. If you had this as your business card, right. 270, 280 pages, six yeah. by nine, thunk, they're just, yeah. there's like, there's no way I'm going to read this. And that's right. what they're thinking. And they're like, oh, I guess I'll say thank you. Thank you. Completely different energy. <laughs> yeah, Use like, this I'm... as your business card. I can read this. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Will you sign it? You know, it's it's amazing the, the difference. You must know this book, Who Moved My Cheese, by Spencer Johnson, MD. I do. Uh, yeah, which again, you're talking about thin book. And of course, he originally started this program for businesses in transition that were dealing hard with change and and it then it became you know something metaphorical i'm a true colors coach so it's very much to do with this i use this book a great deal on that and it, you know it's, it's our perspective on change it, they also did a beautiful book uh, for children who are going through changes as well and it's um it, it's just so although you know two mice two men over abundance of cheese it, it's so relatable <laughs> people can just say oh, i'm yeah got on like that oh god you know oh i think i need to let that go or ah you know that's okay if i scurry and sniff around for, for new opportunities and and that's the thing you want your book to be something that is that is going to go this is the answer i'm looking for or i've never seen things in that way before and it shifts your whole 
you know, perspective on things and you want to trigger something in people, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And you want to let it be easy for them. Yes. That's what I loved about that, about that book. You know, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a book of metaphors, but you yeah. didn't have to think that hard to get the metaphor. Right. <laughs> so, exactly. Exactly. And, and it's, some, you know, some metaphor books, you're like, uh, okay, which I planet I do it. I need to be on to understand <laughs> this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and this exactly. is so simple. Pretty and, straightforward. Yeah, and as I said, as a true colors coach, is that I knew exactly which color each one of those characters were, and 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 uh, a book I've referred to a great deal because it really just does help people kind of understand who they are, how they see things, and why they get stuck and can't move on. And that that is, I think, a, a lot of cases when people are writing. It's like they get stuck on, you know, what they think the book should be or whom it should serve, or I want to serve a lot of people. So, you know, it's five chapters enough and, and you know, become too complex instead of yeah. take the breath, release, <sighs> allow, back to what is that first thing that comes to you, right? Yeah. Because that's what people book, need to know. Mm. In a business building book, you don't want to, give them everything in the book mm. because if you give them everything why do they well, need you work with you right yeah <laughs> and, and you don't want to overload people so, right yeah yeah so it's it's to give them just enough to go oh love her yeah how can i how can i work with her how can right. i get more yes know? and then have more ready and available when your book comes out and then and and have more at all different price points mm -hmm and you'll read you'll get your return on investment very quickly right uh, that's where a lot of people drop the ball on that too so it's like uh what well so what else do you have for me well i have the book and i have coaching okay what else yes uh the book and i have coaching <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> well all i've proven is that i'll buy a book so i hope you have something at that price right, right as well and then something at 97 197 497 yeah. 997 1997 and then your top tier program right and all that is is a repurposing and a repackaging of this yes right yeah and people don't get mad at you for repurposing and repackaging because most people don't get it when they read it the first time or maybe they only read passed into the second chapter and decided mm -hmm. they loved you so now they're actually hearing it for the first time when they do your program right or if it's the second time they'll say oh I'm glad you said that again. And the third yeah. time they'll go, it wasn't until you said it that way yeah. that I really got it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's one of the things those those teachers from The Secret taught me so many years ago is like they won't get mad at you if you repurpose the same thing. Right. It's it's the way. thread, isn't it? Is that you're keeping that yeah. thread all the way through, but what you're doing is showing it at different angles. And people will yeah. get it at different times in yeah. different ways. It's like, oh, I so got it here or there, but now I'm getting it in a different perspective here, right? right. Yeah. Some some people are visual, read the yes. book. Some people are audio, mm -hmm. hear the book. Some people are both at the same time, right? Doing yes. Your, your group mentor program, seeing right. you speak it instead of just only hearing it. Or, yeah hearing it you know or reading it so it's yeah it's amazing uh and then when it lands and you get to see it that's what i love about group mentor programs yeah. right <laughs> when you, like kinesthetics when you, yeah when they're on screen and you see it like they go oh you, yeah. That's yeah. Nice. oh, you go <laughs> yes all right all right we're on to something Speak, right put words on that yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean the, as i said yes. there's this um a story. I mean, there's so many more entrepreneurs today, and certainly with the pandemic, as it's pivoted people into going out into their own business or, or, or completely shifting their coaching practices, um, you know, right. um, of reinventing themselves in many ways, which means that you need to um, replatform yourself you know, um, invite people now to your new arena. And like the content of who you are is still there, but you're presenting it in a different way. And so having the book right. to show this is the thread, the content, but this is the presentation now. And as you said, different levels, like, you know, some people maybe only just want to dip their toes in the water or can only afford a certain aspect of it at this time period and then later right, on right. it's like i can invest more into it and go up to the next level and this thing about my book is here and then i'm taking you up to the great heights but it's going to cost you your home you know that isn't going to get too many clients <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah i like to say that you know when i 
read your book, fall in love with you, and I open up my wallet and say, here's how much I have. Right. And then I, and I look at your site. It's great if you have something <laughs> at whatever I have. Matches my wallet. Right? Yes. Yeah. Then I don't have to, then I don't have to stretch to work with you. It's in my yes. comfort zone. And, and that's great because the, you're going to, you're going to get value you know, yeah. no matter what price point it's yeah. at. Right. And, and obviously that value is going to reflect on your own business. And now there is more liquidity in your business that you can reinvest in going up to the next level. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, just don't try, you know, uh, climb the Mount Everest, you know, with one leap. Uh, there is a process right. and a structure to it. And it, it, it kind of reminds me when I was in boarding school and we were the boarding school was in the moors of England and we used to go for these long walks and it would be, oh, do we have to? And we had one teacher said, no, we're just walking over here to these trees. Let's look at the tree. Now let's go over to that brook. Now let's go over here. Next thing you know, you were back home. And everything had been sectionalized in a way that you were actually excited to go to the next bit, right? Instead of like, oh my God, it's such a long walk. And it didn't feel like a long walk when it was broken up into sections. And I think if we look at our lives in that way, and like, you know, there's a, we are a book of life and we have many chapters. And some of those chapters may be small, some may be bigger, but stop trying to leap to the end because right. life is about the process. Yeah. And all, all success comes one baby step at a time. And yeah. as my, my dear friend and mentor, Jack Canfield, he says, mm -hmm. every, every overnight success has years of hard work. Exactly. It. Yes. Says the yeah. person with the number one franchise, you know, mm -hmm. franchise of all time ever. Right. And they were turned him and his partner, uh, Mark, were turned down by every Everyone. publisher in the world, yeah. except for the last one. Wasn't and it Robert said, Clancy? Yeah. Robert Clancy did a hundred and uh, Robert, which one is it? An author that wrote 170, uh, wrote many, many books. Um, and it was 170 books before finally they accepted the first one and then all of them oh, were yeah. published, you know, and it was like, well, sometimes it's, it's yeah. the timing, it's the people, it's the place, you know, just if you believe in it, persist in it. Yeah. Well, Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul franchise, right? Uh, got turned down by every publisher and mm -hmm. they, finally it was down to the, the last one and and the only reason that publisher said yes is because they were like going bankrupt so they were <laughs> like ah we're, we're going bankrupt anyway so why right. not and they said yes and and uh and what i love that they did is every letter where they got turned down they pasted on the wall in mm -hmm. the office so the office was wall to wall covered with rejections mm -hmm. and all that did was spur them to keep going yes which is um, amazing <laughs> this means the universe is just telling you wrong fit wrong time not a right? match yeah not a match not a match right not and when match. it when it ends up being the right one then you yeah. know okay then the, the synergy is here i am where i am meant to be so whatever rejections we get in life it's just the universe saying to you no not this one not at this yeah, time uh, but if the, if, if the mission is, is <laughs> if the mission, yeah, if the mission is strong enough, uh, you just keep, you keep going with your mission until finally there is that cohesive match there. Don't give up. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. And be very specific with the universe, what you're looking for. Yes. So yes. You can say out loud, if you have your own business, you can say out loud over and over again until it really Six yes. in, I I I am I am now attracting only yeah. people who are a match, who see my value, yeah, and can easily afford to pay me. Right. Yes. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because then, the universe goes okay. Sends you those people. Every interview you have, you're like you tell them how much your program is. They're like, is that all? Are you yeah. kidding me? Send me yeah. the link. You know, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you know you're onto something. Yes. You don't hear what? It's that much? <laughs> yeah. Really? You're like, oh, I don't think it's a match. <laughs> and and that's the thing. There there is somebody for somebody everywhere. I mean, yes. if people listening to this today, if what you have said is not a match, but it's actually even triggered them into thinking they can write a book or the you know the process so it's okay right because again yeah. you're not for everybody 
and you don't want to be for everybody. You want to be for the people that are in sync with you and exactly. with what you're doing and people who are willing to invest in their business and understand the value of their book calling card. Right. So yes. if they yes. see it, then those are going to be the, the people that connect. And that's really all that we can do. Again, it's um, we're not meant to serve everybody. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Having said well. that, how do people get hold of your books and how do people contact you to make that inquiry as if they're a match or not? Yeah, well, it's it's Keith Leon S. Uh, with the initial S, you said Keith Leon at the beginning. So if you uh, uh, go on Amazon and type in Keith Leon S, all the books will come up there. Uh, the Walking with My Angels books are, they're really everywhere. You can get it, uh, Target, uh, Walmart, <laughs> Amazon, uh, everywhere. Uh, to get a hold of me or find out more about our publishing business and what we do, you go to Leon Smith Publishing, Leon Smith Publishing. And uh, right there, you'll see a, a, a video of a young lady who is, uh, I believe at the time she was uh, eight, seven or eight, and she did the You Speak It book process, and she's going to tell you about it. Wow. And uh, also, there's a free gift there. You can pick up your expert author success blueprint there. Just sign up, and so there's a free gift for you right on the homepage. But it also tells you everything about um, what we do, who we are. You know who are our board of advisors everything you would need to know is, is right there on the site and uh, then uh, when you tune into that and you're feeling like uh, it's a match you'd like to do a, a book a, a clarity call then the link is right there you can book a clarity call and we'll, we'll connect see how Excellent. we can support you so leon smith is l-e-o-n smith publishing.com you also have belong belief publishing.com yeah yeah that book is uh, more specific to the Walking with My Angels book and our etheric titles, yeah. And uh, of course, you know, when people are just putting in the Amazon Leon Smith, Lee, uh, Keith Leon, uh, L-E-O-N dot S, right? What does the S stand for? Uh, Keith Leon and then S period. Right, <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, that's a great, that's a great story. I wonder if we have time for it. Uh, I was told when I, was wanting to know what date to launch this book i was told to find the top numerologist in the world mm -hmm. and ask them so i got with the top numer numerologist and they did my numbers for everything right mm -hmm. for the book for the business for everything and they're like you were born uh keith leon smith but i dropped smith a long 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 time ago right like i'm a musician as soon as i started singing I just, right i dropped that I, I didn't like it so uh he, he said uh, i can't i can't remember which was five or seven but he yeah. said like when you had the smith you were uh this like let's say right. a seven right but you became a five when you dropped when mm -hmm. you just went to keith leon so a five is compassionate right mm -hmm. oh you're so compassionate everybody feels you they just love you but do you find when you're at an event and you're talking about books and helping with people do you have to t work 10 times harder than anyone else to get people to actually hire you and mm. i was like yeah and he said that's because you went from seven to yeah. a five if you put in the s and i don't care if it's s keith leon keith s leon keith leon s whatever if you bring s or smith back in you'll be a seven and then everything will change so i was just like okay well if i was told i needed to find the numerologist i probably should trust the numerologist yes, yes. so i would i added the s period and if anything it became a great topic of conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> uh but it really did but it really did shift things it was very interesting when i went on the angel tour and yeah and i was just not even for so many years i like you know as as a speaker you got to sell your programs right yes, you're there. Yes, well, that's yeah. your business right and and so but i had to work 10 times as hard well on the angel thing i just wanted to help people right, right. to make connection with spirit so i really wasn't even concerned with that i god's got me i'm always covered and i'm, yeah. I'm not worried about it so i would just kind of like oh you know and i have this i have the home study course and you know 
and it was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, it, I hardly even said anything about it. Yeah. So it, it really, it really did shift things energetically. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it does. You know, I, yes. I changed my name a few years ago to Troy, right? Because I am a, a birth sign eight. And my letters, you know, with the name Sarah Troy added up to the eight as well. And I am very much governed by that eight. And uh, my ex-married name was, you know, my ex-married name. And I didn't want to be by that name anymore. So I went yeah. with the Troy and it's the, it definitely shifted everything on me as well. So there's yeah. I, I am numerology. I use that a great deal. It's absolutely incredible. And there's, a, you know, we've got to... <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, you look at everything as a mathematical equation. So numbers count, folks. <laughs> they really do. They yeah, all have their own energy signature. So yeah, everything's energy and yeah. mathematics. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for sharing here today. And you know, it's for anybody who was wanting to kind of look at doing their business book, um, or just you know wanting to read, you know, Walking with Angels, or just want to kind of suss out what you're doing here, please do reach out to him. It's leonsmithpublishing.com, and uh, you can get you can find out all about it there. And of course, Amazon has all of his books as well. And uh, just you know, investigate. Does the program suit you? Is there a synergy there? But understand this if you do have a coaching business today there's a lot of different form of marketing that you have to do and the um the five chapter book handing it out to people uh, is really a great investment because it really does speak to who you are why you're doing what you're doing what your services are and then that is that first meeting you would have had with people when you do have that first meeting it's I know you already. I feel comfortable exactly. with you already. It's like, what can we do next? You know, instead of like, hmm, do I trust this person? Is this a sales pitch? You've already got their number, right? So right. it's, uh, you've already broken the ice. So when they do want to meet with you, it means they want to move forward with you. So it really weeds out the people, right? Well said, <laughs> <laughs> well spoken, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Keith. Yes. And uh, to everyone else, remember Christmas is coming up. Book, books are a wonderful gift for Christmas, right? So don't forget to give those and walking with angels, hear his own story there. And as I said, if you're wanting to publish a book, reach out to him because uh, you may not know anything. That's okay. He knows a great deal. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.